Boom. Hello and welcome to the Executive Protection Lifestyle Podcast Season 3 with your host Byron Rogers. This podcast is dedicated to the executive protection practitioner, the private security professional. In this podcast, we're going to talk about the mental, emotional, psychological, physiological fitness that goes into being an efficient and effective executive protection agent. Whether you're in law enforcement, whether you're a mom that's looking at how to protect your children or a father that's focused on how to protect his family, I believe this podcast has something for all of you. We might even get into some tales from the crypts of true Hollywood stories from time to time. I'm doing this podcast because I feel the reality of this job is simple. If you really want to be good at executive protection, it's more than just a job. It really is a lifestyle. And those of you who've been in the game for any serious amount of time, you already know what I'm saying is true. So if that sounds interesting to you, enjoy the show. Out. Boom, what's up you guys? Byron Rogers here with another episode of the Executive Protection Lifestyle Podcast. This one's gonna be a solo one. I got some things that have been on my mind, that have been on my heart that I've really just kind of wanted to dig into, man. You know, I uh, watching things in the industry change and evolve uh, has been amazing over the last few years. You know, when I got in, like you guys hear me talk about, it's like you had to know somebody, you know? And even then it was like, you get in, you know, you're on that detail and you don't know if you can even move around, if you can do anything. Um, now, the industry has turned into a full-blown, it's an industry, man. You got a career path. There's multiple different directions you can go. You know, you can go uh, the corporate route into a big corporation and end up, you know, being almost like a regional manager of a number of different details and doing all kinds of different things. You can go your own way and you can be a solo operator and get a good group of guys around you and work the PPO angle and, 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 and support other large companies and make a name for yourself and your organization. There's so many things going on. There's a Forbes report that said that, you know, I saw a few reports that said that this industry is supposed to double over the course of the next 10 years. It's like one of the top five industries in the, in the world right now, because, you know, Hey, robots can't replace us, you know, at the end of the day. And then on top of that, people are starting to really, really realize the value of security. You know, I, I hate to kind of really, you know, it's, it's something that sometimes comes as a, not a positive, you know, it's something that comes as one of those things where it's like, well, you know, it's not good that our industry thrives off of chaos. You know, it's one of those things that we kind of think of and it's like, well, you know, I'm not proud of that. But at the same time, you know, I, I think also there's a lot to be said for the reality that our industry does thrive off of chaos but it's an honor to be capable and it's an honor to be those people who are able to defend and who are able to bring honor uh, to bring order to the chaos that are able to help people feel secure and feel safe in the midst of chaos when you see someone on their worst day and they've got a an employee that's trying to kill them or a relative you know they didn't get enough of the settlement you know uh that's trying to come after them or or, or uh you know that stalker or you know, that spouse or whatever the situation is, chaos is always going to exist. And, you know, the way I've always looked at it is it's an honor to be able to be those people who can step in and bring order to the chaos. That's really, truly the path of a warrior, you know? So I'm going to go on ahead and address a few things in this episode. It's just me. So hope I don't let anybody down. It'll be like one of my considerations videos um, and I hope that by the end of this thing, you know, I've given you guys some good perspective on ways that we can make the industry a better place, really, you know, ways that we can make the industry a better place, in my opinion, and things that I think we can all do to, um, to really just improve the quality of, of the industry for everyone. You know, there's been some, there's been some behavior in the industry, and this is something that it happens on a macro and a micro level. This is something you guys are going to run into outside uh, of the industry. And this is something that you're going to also run, run into if you ever try to elevate yourself above the pack in any pack, actually in any social, uh, sphere that you find yourself in. But, um, you know, our industry, as you start to climb the ladder and you get up to like that blue blood level. And for me, you know, I've never really known who's who in the industry. I've never really known, you know, who the important, the important people were or, the aristocracy of our industry, you know, really, 
really is up until a few years ago when I started going to certain conferences and certain venues and events and people were like, yo, that's such and such, you know, that's such and such. And then I got a podcast and it was like my business to know who these people are and seek them out and interview them. And there's so many of them. I still haven't even gotten through all of them yet, you know, cause I'm working too, you know, and honestly, most of them have been great, amazing people, really good people. But there is a lot of like tribalism in our industry. There's a lot of like this crew and that crew and this school and that school and this detail and that detail. And like, we don't talk to them. We don't talk to them. And like, you know, they be beefing in all these different ways. And like, I just thought that stuff was just whatever, you know, and I've always endeavored. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've always endeavored to be a free agent. I've always endeavored to be someone who. I'm just the little PPO guy in the corner. I don't necessarily support anyone and get caught up in anyone's drama. I'm just here to make a contribution and whatever it turns out to be, it turns out to be, you know, but for those of you who are coming up in the EP game, it's something to know about, something to be aware of. And you'll see it also happen on security details. When you're on a detail, they will be the cool guys. they will be the guys, you know, that, that think they're better than everyone sometimes. And they will be the, the guys that think, with a guy or two that thinks he's the client's favorite and he might be you know and he might be but learning to navigate that on a macro and micro level i think is what's really really important because it's something you're going to deal with i think eventually you find yourself in a position where you've got to face it you know you've got to face it you know with my brands i know that sometimes it can be a little confusing because i've got you know, I've got four different brands, you know, I'm doing multiple things. Some things are executive protection facing, some things are uh, civilian facing, you know, and uh, for the things I do, everyone kind of loves it. And everyone, uh, for the most part, enjoys it. But every once in a while, you get those haters and God bless them, you know, uh, I recently had an issue with someone trying to uh, say things about me that just were just truth mixed with lies, but overall an attack on my honor that was really like, just absolutely ridiculous. I was like, you just don't know me, man. Like, you know, uh, in this age of, you know, the internet uh, where you say things online and you can't take them back, it's really expensive. You know, I, I really considered for a while, like speaking directly to, the, uh, to this issue. I reached out to the person, you know, to try to squash it uh, over a phone conversation, but you know, it's not about, it wasn't about actually fixing that. It was more about fame and trying to get people to notice that, that person, his work, you know, and it's just, it's unfortunate when um, that work is trying to tear other people down, you know, and as I looked into the person, I found that they had a long history of trying to tear basically anyone and everyone in the industry that's done anything great down, you know, major schools, they always had something bad to say about them, major players on the board that have actually made valuable contributions, they had something to say about them. So for me, it's just like, okay, well, I don't have time for this. At the end of the day, you know, I know that the people who value my contributions, you know, and value what I've been doing for all these years, you know, the thousands of people that come to our live events and get their lives changed, you know, and it's not because I, I say that their lives changed. It's literally because they tell me their lives have been changed. I got, you know, and I actually invited this individual to be on my podcast for a minute. And I, uh, you know, a few times, and uh, then I got invited to go be on a podcast with him. And then I stopped myself, you know, and I was kind of like, what are you doing, man? You know, like, why would you take your reputation and the positivity that you've created and the things that you've created and the momentum of your brand and spend that defending yourself against somebody who, you know, no one knows who they are because they haven't made a positive impact yet. It's like, why would you do that? You know, that person's whole body of work is tearing other people down. And, you know, as they say in the rap hip hop industry, they're a beef artist, you know? So it, it was kind of like, man, like, don't even, don't even sweat the negativity, man. Just keep making contributions. And it's the same for you guys when you're on a detail and you see that someone's trying to tear you down. Someone's trying to come after you. Someone's trying to uh, point out what you're doing wrong all the time. Love them, appreciate them. Thank them for their feedback and just get better. Perfect your game. Continue learning from the haters and growing and contributing and apologizing and doing better. That's how you win. Because ultimately, um, as, as, as Alexander the Great said, all that matters in the end is what you can achieve. 
right? And your achievements and your work product will ultimately vindicate you um, of, of whatever it is that people falsely accuse you of, you know? Um, I'm not saying everything he said was false. You know, there's some things that were like true, but it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's not, uh, they're not things that are, are like bad. You know, he's like, oh, you, you bought followers. Like, yeah, dude, I've been an internet marketer for, I've been online building a business for over a decade. You know, it's like when the internet came out and social media came out and it was like, hey, let's build a business on social media. That's what you did. You bought followers so you can get more eyeballs on your stuff. It's like, no, man, you just have an outdated mindset and you've never, you've never seen anything like me. You don't understand what I'm doing. You know, he said this other thing that was really cute was like, those who post the most work the least. And I was like, what are you talking about, bro? I have a business. I've been a businessman in the online space for years. I have employees. I've got content scheduled out for uh three months you know i'm dropping a video a week do you know what that means when it comes to systems and organization and the speed at which i can provide and generate content you're kidding me and quality content you're kidding me right now okay uh you just don't understand what you're looking at you know you don't know what you're reading here you know and it was like this really immature like popularity contest thing where it was like well you shouldn't have this many followers you bought some I like i dude i don't even have time for this i have multiple brands i've got live events going on you know i've got uh i'm changing the game and you know the reality to me too another thing and i don't want to get too much into the details but the pettiness of it all because that's what you'll find that it is the guy on the detail that's constantly pointing out what you're doing wrong the guy on the detail that's constantly trying to trip you up it's going to be all these petty little things that just come from insecurity and what you're really dealing with is someone who is seeing in you something that scares them because they either they either think you're going to pass them. It's an insecurity. They're coming from insecure energy, it, egotistical, insecure energy. So they either think you're going to pass them up, make them irrelevant. Uh, they are threatened by your competence. And so they want to knock you down to their level. Uh, they want to rob you of your influence in that environment because you literally threaten them who they are and what they represent. And then even beyond that, they believe you should have, they should have the favor that they're seeing you get. So if the client or the detail leader is like, yeah, you know, I think I like this Byron guy. And they're like, oh yeah, nah, but By Byron guy's stupid. He's got, uh, he's got too many tattoos. You know, I just, yeah. <laughs> why do people feel the need to get a uh, tattoo? You know what I mean? Like they start coming up with all this stuff, you know? And did you see he, the way he closed the door, he wasn't even facing outboard when he closed the door that time. I'm like what kind of agent even does that type of stuff? It's like, okay, bro. All right. All right. Well, you got me. You know what? I'll make sure I do it right next time. Thank you. I appreciate your feedback, my friend. You know what I mean? So don't say it sarcastic like I just did. Dude, be humble about it. But you know what I mean? Like, this is the game. This is the move. You know, kill them with kindness. Kill them with effectiveness. Kill them with professionalism. Kill them with humility. Okay, sir, I'll do it better next time, sir. What was it that you didn't like? Uh, how could I have executed on that objective better? You know, and ask the person who's hating on you how you could have done it better, then do it better. You know what I'm saying? And it's like this alchemy of relationship. It's this alchemy, like, because they're giving you a negative and you're turning it into a positive. And all that's happening is you're getting better, bigger, stronger, faster, smarter, and you really helping them realize everything that they've feared, you know? And when people look at you in this game and in this life, and I speak about this because it's very important in EP, you're doing close quarters close quarter social dynamics with your team and that's generally where this happens but this also happens in the royal court as well with regards to the relationships around your client this is stuff i teach in that training day success package at my school if you guys haven't joined you need to join because this is like the black this is like the this is the social dynamics black hat stuff that you guys get in there that we talk about that there's a reason you see all these students being like hey man you turned me into a social dynamics ninja and i got that job i got that promotion and da, 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 right you see the fruit is there, you know, the dude was like trying to call me a fake. And it's like, homie, if I was a fake, then how have I been able to help so many other people achieve their goals with regards to their careers? Like if you go right now to executive protection training day.com and you go and you see my testimonial page as it's full of testimonies. Every other week I'm dropping testimonies of guys that are getting what they want out of their career in the industry, you know? It's an ongoing thing. And then like, I haven't even dropped a master class yet. This is the first time I'm mentioning it on the air. There's a master class coming that's gonna blow the socks off the industry, something that has never been before offered in the executive protection space online. Ah, and you get to keep it. 
and there's and 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 and, and there's just so much to it, man. But uh, and I shouldn't go too deep into that. But what you're going to realize is you're going to have haters, you know. And a really wise friend of mine who was counseling me on this issue, he said, never feed the trolls. And that means never sit there and try to justify and try to come down to their level and argue with them or meet them on their own ground and, and bicker back and forth about the things that they're talking about, you know, because it, it devalues you, you know, especially if you do have a big brand, you know, like some of you guys out there have some brands. And if you've got a big brand, you got to realize, man, you know, why should that one person get your undivided attention? Why should that one person who's approaching your brand with negativity get your on get a response out of you when you can't even keep up with responding to all the great people, the beautiful people that you want to serve, that you have a heart for, that you wake up in the morning and you train yourself and you read and you study and you keep your eyes open when you're doing your work so you have good content to give them? How come you don't take time for every one of them, you know? Well, because you can't. You need to create products and systems to serve them in high volumes. But but who says this hater should get all your attention? This is the way that I, I believe you got to look at this. And I don't know who this podcast is for other than me. Maybe it's for somebody out there, you know, because I know more of you guys are going to rise up and start continuing leading the industry in your own way, man. It's a beautiful thing. And there's so much room at the table. You know, there's so much room at the table for other influencers to come and like lead the industry in their own stinking way man i can't do what you guys can do you know you can't do what i can do the way i do it you know what i mean but that's the beauty of it and that's why this episode is named competition uh, is named cooperation over competition it's one of the main things i teach in my course around the social dynamics portion of it but i believe this is the way forward. I believe this is the most efficient, effective way forward because I believe it's the only way for us to really achieve the type of growth that's going to put food on all of our, put on everyone's table. Business is competitive by nature, you know, and that's what we're doing here. We are competing with one another to do business, but when it comes to the industry, the reputation of executive protection agents, the reputation of the industry, the reputation of the businesses, when it comes to client relations and perceptions to this industry, I don't believe there's any reason that we shouldn't be presenting a very professional and very unified front. You know what I'm saying? Business, yes, can be cutthroat, but uh, let me take you on a journey and see if I can paint this picture for you. You know what I mean? We've all seen problems in the industry with regards to lowballing and undercutting each other uh, and the guy trying to get in, but like, who does that hurt? You know, who does that hurt at the end of the day when now we got agents working for peanuts, we got clients looking for companies that'll do the work for peanuts. And now our entire industry is undervalued and it becomes a much more predatorial place for a company to try to maintain its value and afford to do the work. Everyone suffers and everything suffers. The, the product the client's getting starts suffering. The businesses suffer uh, and people start leaving the industry because they can't make a living doing it. You know, and we've seen issues like this in certain parts of the country. Certain markets are really good. Certain markets are really bad because of this. You know, these are things to think about. I know I'm, I probably single-handedly won't change your mind, but as I always say, these are considerations, man. You know, you got to think of the industry when you're coming up with your pricing and you've got to think of the long game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you might have some youngster who's willing to do the work for less, but don't have that be your your flagship price, you know what I'm saying? Because all you're doing is taking, you're taking food off your own table if you can't hold the line on what you're charging and charge a fair price uh, to the clients to maintain a baseline in our industry of what should be charged to do the work, you know? There are levels to this thing, you know, there are levels to this thing and there are no, there's no shame in the levels, you know, there's no shame in being the square badge security guy, man, we need you guys, you guys do a good job, we need you to hold us down, we need you in our businesses, we need that level of security, there's no shame in being the bouncer at the club, I was bouncer at the club multiple times, if I lost all my stuff right now, I can go back to bouncing and build my books again, the same way I did twice on the East Coast and the West Coast, right, you know, and uh uh, uh, we need our executive protection agents, you know what I'm saying? But square badge dudes are not bouncers and bouncers are not executive protection agents and vice versa. They're different mission sets. There are different uh, types of agents. There are different levels of efficacy and, 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 and different skill sets. Now, I wish every executive protection agent was at least a bouncer at one point in time because being a bouncer teaches you a lot about the hands-on game and social dynamics at a very accelerated rate. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, I think that guys that come out of bouncing in many ways can be better agents as long as they can smooth off the rough edges and and and, and get in the game because they're not afraid to get physical and they've been dealing with ridiculous, intoxicated and amplified people for hours on end all through the night for however long they were bouncing. You know what I'm saying? So I think I think that is um, it's a great path, man. It's a great path to get in the game. Start bouncing. You know what I'm saying? You never know who you'll meet either. That's that's how I did it. Did it you know, when I was building my books, you know, and I, uh, uh, I also, you know, Christian West was right when he was talking about how uh, he wishes every agent that's in the game has to go on tour at least once at the, towards the beginning of their career. Because when you think you're, it's hard, you think you're slammed, it's like, man, you go and do some tours, you're going to find out what it's really like to be slammed in this game. You know, my, my first client didn't go on tour you know, he was the type of individual that stayed. There was no, he went on tour season uh, all year round. There was no season. There's no, we're going to go on a tour. It was like, no, this is what we do 24 seven all year round. So my, my flow was never a seasonal on tour deal. It was like, this is no, we just stay on tour. We live on tour, homie. That's why we hit 60 some odd countries the first year and did it on repeat for seven years. Right. Um, and that's the thing that kills me, you know, like the dude trying to say that, you know, I was, I wasn't legit and I'm just sitting there like, man, you know, Thank God I know who I am. Thank God my clients know who I am. And this is the thing that you're going to have to look inside and deal with when you're on a detail and someone's trying to attack your honor or say that you don't know how to do the job or say that you don't know, you know, uh, you don't deserve to be there. You know, you got to look deep inside yourself and you got to say, you know, who, who really am I, you know? is this all a facade you know and if you're learning it's just you're learning and that's what you tell them it's like hey you know I'm, I'm learning you know teach me and you can disarm that person by giving them what they want which is just uh food for their ego you know but you can do that and you can gain then gain influence and you can actually turn that enemy into uh that adversary into a friend in some ways that way until so you start to pass them again and then you'll have to fight them inevitably if they don't care about you depending on how much they care about you at that point but that's another battle but for me it was just like it's always been like, I look in the mirror at the end of every day and I'm like, you know, are you as advertised? You know, like this brand is executive protection lifestyle. That's what the brand is. I'm supposed to be living the executive protection lifestyle in front of you. Protection is more than just a job. It really is a lifestyle. That's what I'm here to do, you know, and that's what I endeavor to do, you know, and that's what I try to do. And I know there are areas I need to pick up my game a little bit in, and that'll never change, but that is the game. You know what I'm saying? The game is seeing those areas and picking up the game. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, the beauty of it, like, who would I be if I sat here before you perfect? You know, uh, I wouldn't be legit. I'd be, I'd be faking it. I'd be lying to you. You know what I mean? But then at the same time, it's like, well, you know, are you, you deserve to be here. And it's like, man, I, I, the only job I've ever had in my entire life is executive protection. You know, outside of uh, the United States Marine Corps, the only thing I've done since I was 21, I'm 25, I'm 35 right now. You know, he's probably going to call me on that and make another video like, oh, Byron Tate is 25. Anyways, the only thing I've ever done since I was, since I was 21 outside of being Marine Corps infantry, you know, and earning my stripes there overseas is, is uh, executive protection, you know? The only thing I've done, man. So, you know, and I've done it all over the world and I've done it with every client demographic that I, I'm aware of. And I've done it for, man, it's getting up there, you know, since 2008 at 21 years old. Um, you know, I have all the permits and licenses that an agent can have in the state of California. I got my PPO, it's like, what else do you want, man? This is what I do all day, every day, almost. Uh, six days a week, you know, and I work half a deep, you know, six, six and a half days a week, you know, uh, Saturdays, I do like to take time off and go to my shooting competitions, though. That's like, that's my jam. I like to do that on Saturdays, you know, so when I'm in town, and when I'm not out there in the game, you know, so, you know, I know who I am, my clients know who I am. I think many of you guys know who I am, especially if you've come to some of the live events and seen what we do and seen the training. My students, you know, by the grace of God, we have over, we have about 250 students now, you know, that are not only in the course, finish the course, but I still meet up with all my patrons. I like to call them patrons because I'm a student of the game too. But I like to meet up with all my patrons, you know, with the League of Executive Protection Specialists once every two weeks at a minimum, sometimes once a week, we hop on a Zoom call just like this. And I just spend time with them and answer questions and try to, you know, influence positively and, and listen to reports back of success guys are having in the field, the struggles guys are having in the field. You know, I stay with my cadre. I stay with my, my student body and, and I'm there when stuff's not working and I'm there when stuff 
stuff is working. And that's why I say my course will give you more than any other course will give you over the course of your career, because I literally stay with you. And I'm like your executive protection conciliary on your consultant uh, for during your career. You know, so what I, I say all that to say is, you know, when you do get challenged and you run into that hater, you know, you're walking on water and they're like, oh, it's because this cat can't swim. You know what I'm saying? He's a non-swimming uh, ninja, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know, make sure you know who you are. And if you're a beginner in this game, just be like, I'm a beginner in this game. I don't know everything. And if you're a, 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 a vet in the game and you've been around the block 850 million times, be like, you know what? This is a new detail. I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know everything. Show me. Show me what's up. You know, I mean, that's what I say to this, this EP hall monitor guy. I'd say, hey, bro, you know, make some valuable contributions. The game is going to respond to you in direct proportion to the value of your contributions. And if no one knows who you are yet, it's because you haven't made valuable contributions to the game. You may have been in the game for a long time. Uh, you may have been in the game for a long time. You may have done whatever. But if you're, you're talking about you want the game to recognize you as this person, make some valuable contributions. That's how you win. You know, that's how you, you you do legacy stuff. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to make contributions. But for all you guys listening, my advice to you, if you're on a detail, if you're in a spot and maybe you've made some mistakes because it's easy to get drug into toxic behavior um, because we all have it in us as well. Light implies dark, day implies night, life implies death, one, zeros. We all have a light side and a dark side, right? So maybe you've made some mistakes. My advice to you, if you want to speak to your street cred, um, is hunker down and let your contribution speak for you. Don't tell people what you're going to do. Don't, um, you know, defend yourself anymore. Just hunker down, do your job, do the best job possible at your job. Don't even, don't talk about yourself. Don't do anything. Just do your job and do a good job. Do your job and do a good job. Do your job and do a good job. And I tell you right now, you will literally brick by brick, rebuild your reputation on that detail. But you got to follow through. You've got to be consistent. And you've got to make yourself valuable by showing people that they can count on you. They can depend on you. You know, so, you know, that's the way forward, you know, and then in my opinion, you know, with our industry, I think the way forward is cooperation over competition. And this is kind of how I dig into this, you know, too often on EP details, you find, you know, that, that someone makes a mistake and the client, the principal turns the heat up and they're like, yo, who left the thing on the microwave or, you know, how come I'm sitting in traffic for, for, you know, this amount of time, like who didn't check the route or like, yo, you know, who left my juice? Uh, back at the spot, you know, and didn't get it on the plane, you know what I mean? And and everybody on the team, they're like jumping out of the way, you know, um, and 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 trying to sh blame shift and do all these different things. That ball hits the floor and you guys all jump on it. You know what? That's my fault. I didn't double check this. You know, we need to double check this next time. Your leader should jump on it too. But if your leader's not there, the whole team comes in and jumps on it. The whole team is like, you know what? we apologize. I apologize. We're going to make sure this gets handled. And everybody covers everybody, you know, not just, oh, Reggie left it outside of the thing, you know, oh, Reggie made it. Well, who was supposed to check the bags? Reggie, Reggie didn't check the bag. You know what I mean, no, 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 you guys don't leave Reggie out to burn. That's not how you actually build a good and strong team. What you do is the DL should be like, hey, you know what, sir, ma'am, that's my fault. I need to double check this, that, and the next thing. And then he deals with Reggie. We're going to improve our systems. We're going to make sure that doesn't happen. You know, who, how come the, the you know, what's, I mean, there's a million things that go wrong at any point in time. You know what I mean? Who swept the green room? You know, you know, sir, that was my responsibility to get that done. Everyone jumps on that. You know, no, 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 Byron, that was my responsibility. No, 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 you know, and, and you guys all take responsibility for the negative stuff. And then that way the client will see that you guys are unified. The principal is going to see that you guys are getting each other's back and that you guys are all going to endeavor to make sure it doesn't happen again. The other thing I like to do when there is a mistake is don't just apologize. Don't just uh, say it won't happen again, but then literally show the principal if you have time with them, if you do have this type of time with them. You know, there's a downside to every single thing I tell you. So remember, these are considerations. Absorb what's useful, disregard what's useless, add what is essentially your own. Don't come at me and be like, yeah, but what if grasshoppers have machine guns fire and you didn't see that in your little advice? Just hashtag, gotta love the internet. Anyways, but something I love to do that I've noticed that principals like is 
you know, if you do make a mistake, you not only address that, you apologize for it, but then you show them, hey, you know, uh, I put that information out to the team. You know, um, we've put in these systems to make sure that doesn't happen again. And everyone's rogered up and is on the same page. Sorry for the inconvenience. Um, please let me know if there's anything else you need me to do for you. And they usually appreciate it when you actually straight up say, this was the mistake, address the mistake. This is literally how we are fixing it or just fixed it. But it depends on your principal and your client or your client. So, you know, and you guys understand the difference between principal and client. Principal is the actual person, the protectee, the person you are protecting. Client some is the person paying the bills. The words are used interchangeably very often, but the client's the person like the corporation, the bean counters, the suits, as we call them. That's one distinction that's out there, uh, but most agencies use it uh, interchange the two terms. But nonetheless, when I say principal and client, that's what I'm meaning. But then also with the same thing when it comes to good feedback that you're getting from your principals, you know, Byron, man, you did a great job with the advance. Everything's looking so smooth. Uh, say, sir, I, uh, sir, ma'am, I really appreciate that. I really couldn't have done without my team. They sent me, they were feeding me the right info, the itinerary, where I needed to go, what I needed to do, points of contact. The team really helped me out. Oh, okay. 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 Team, you know, you guys did great. Yo, you know what? Byron's just really good at this and just push the positivity to each other, you know, constantly don't take credit for anything and make it a game out of literally pushing credit to everyone else on the team and literally make it a game out of everyone taking responsibility for bad things when they happen. So not one guy gets burned. So not one guy gets torched because that's what happens. One guy's life goes do, 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 do. And you know, everyone's like, whew, thank God it wasn't me. But then your team looks weaker, man. And I think this has happened out there in the industry too. You know, I think that, you know, for too long, it's been tribal out there. You know, it's been like, oh, my school's better than your school. Da, 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 da. My detail's better than your detail. Oh, I don't want to share trade secrets. Because when I came in this game, it was like all about like, everybody was so closed mouth and like the quiet professional thing, which listen, at this point in my career, I don't disrespect anybody's game anymore. I don't look down on anybody. I came in here and it was like EP over everything. You're an EP agent, not a bodyguard. Uh, and, you know, we all think that we're better than bodyguards. So don't, we don't like when people call us bodyguards because it's a slang term for what we do. We're executive protection agents, you know? And it's like, I get it, man. And I dig that, you know? But as I've been interviewing all these high level players and I've been coming up in the game and I've been learning and growing, you know, like I get that. And I'm from that school. Make no mistake. I know I'm black and I know I have muscles and I know I have tattoos and I know I look kind of like, you know, but trust me, I'm a hybrid man. Like when I work, I work like an executive protection agent. I consider myself an executive protection agent. I do advances and uh, all that stuff, you know, multiple country advances. I can do a solo whole, set up a whole entire country solo if I need to, right? Um, risk, threat, vulnerability assessments and all that stuff. We do all this stuff, right? But, you know, I can even dive, dive into OSINT and, and, and get online and get spooky on you if I need to, right? But what I've learned in, at this point in my game, and my man, the EP hall monitor was over there talking about like, you look more like a bodyguard to me, buddy. And I was like, whatever, man, God bless you, dude. I, I don't know what you look like, but I tell you right now, if the picture you got up on LinkedIn and Facebook was the one you used on your resume and then you walked into my office looking the way you look, you would be catfishing. That's what you'd be doing. And I wouldn't be able to hire you. Anyway, so I'm just saying, I mean, I can hire you, but like I'd feel catfished. Anyways, <laughs> um, so I shouldn't have said that. I should, have, I should cut this out. I don't know if I will. We'll see what happens. Anyways, so, you know, you know, with that whole like, oh, you look like a bodyguard thing. Uh, and with these different parts of the industry, you know, and as I've interviewed people, I've found to be like, hey, man, you know, I, uh, the bodyguard thing, you know, civilians understand that term. They just do. I can tell them I'm an executive protection agent. We've all done it. And they just look at you like you're crazy. Like, oh, okay. What? So what exactly is that? And then you know what you got to do next. You know what you got to do next. You got to tell them it's like a bodyguard, but we don't like that term. That's exactly what you got to tell them next. This means maybe you're not using the most effective communication you're not using the most effective terminology you know what i mean uh it's in elijah shaw's book so uh you know that that's a consideration the other thing is too man you know at this point in the game we need everybody we need everybody who does what they do in this game there are certain industries you know certain clientele packages that 
yo, you need these bodyguards, man. You need dudes that do what they do. You need mountainous dudes that move bodies in these clubs and these events. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I still remember when I started doing EP down in Florida and I'm like a medium sized ninja dude. I'm like a medium sized dude. Like, I just was like, I was like, yo, yo, I did EP in Cali. I'm hot, you know? And then I came down to Florida and I'm like, on the scale of one to 10, like monster dudes and like normal dudes, I'm like a 5.5, like maybe a six. I got up to like a six for Florida, but like, you know, I'm 5'10, you know, 240 when I'm when I'm hard, you know what I'm saying? But now I'm walking around about 230, you know, 230, feeling good, feeling, feeling, you know, feeling slim and effective and dangerous and effective, right? But like even at 240, I was a little down there, <laughs> you know. Um, but the point is for a lot of those venues and for a lot of those games and for a lot of the acting and singing talent down there, you might need you some you do need guys like that, you know. So uh I don't look down on anybody for serving in the industry the way they're physiologically designed because i can't get on that level and for the game man for the game man there's some there are some bouncers that bounce and that know that game and run that game and are kings of that game and that is their set man and you you can't step in their house without them you know what i'm saying knowing everything and knowing how to get you anything and knowing how to make that whole venue work for you you know what i'm saying like I love dudes that like run their craft and take pride in their stuff and master, you know, uh, like Eliza said, play your position, play their position. You know what I mean? And master their positions. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta, I don't care how cool you are in the industry. You gotta have respect for people. You know, another one that got me this year that was very interesting is, you know, you know, I was big on not ever showing pictures of me working clients and principals, which I won't do personally, because for my ethos and where I work in the industry and the people I work with and the type of things I do, you know, uh, it just doesn't, you don't do that. Right. But, you know, I see other guys do it, but they're working totally different client demographics. They're speaking a whole nother language, you know, and one of my conciliaries was like, yo, you know, you, you gotta be careful. If you're looking down on things that people do or the way they make their money. And I'm like, what are you talking about, man? You know, I thought I had this EP game figured out, man. What you talking about, man? You're supposed to be my brother, man. Why are you talking to me like that? No, no, I'm, you guys got to know Dave Chappelle. No, I'm not the joke I'm cracking. But, you know, I start thinking like, what do you mean by this? Um, and then they're like, yo, in those circles and those parts of the game, and it takes balls to say this because I know a lot of like the corporate EP game is just sitting there and going to be like, this dude's losing it. You know what I'm saying? But you got to realize there's different, there are different hoods, like there's different sets, there's different environments, there's different client packages. There's there's so much, this industry has such a diverse and expansive nature that there's no one way anymore. Anyone who thinks there's one way is just outdated and is just missing it. They're missing the full, the big picture. They, they don't have the perspective of what all the realms in the kingdom of this game really like, represent what they the, that they exist and how to flow and move in these environments you know and i think it's our, our it's our responsibility to be able to do these things at least for me it is you know um and as a somebody who is doing a podcast and is all about the industry not just one part of the industry is all about the industry i guess it is my responsibility to have some uh awareness of these things and to talk about these things right so uh you know I, I personally will not you will not see a picture of me with a principal or client anywhere on my social media at any time uh unless it's something like a tmz got us uh which you know we try to avoid that even but it happens from time to time there's a couple floating around out there uh but i don't think my name's been attached to them yet so y'all have a hard time finding that but anyways and it was years ago it was years ago y'all might laugh at what i was wearing but anyways Oh, it's going to come back to haunt me now. It so is. But nonetheless, you know, the, the, the lesson is, you know, in certain client packages and client demographics, some clients want to see who you've worked with. You know, some clients want to see that you have that brand. You know, some clients actually think that you having more social media is legit, you know. And just because those aren't the principles and clients that I deal with, it doesn't make me right for being like, oh, well, you know, uh, somebody who's doing that is doing something wrong. Well, maybe they're going out for a different type of fish. You know, my types of people, they see that on your social media, they'll never talk to you, you know, but if you're going after that type of client, maybe that's what they want to see. You know, those are the lessons that I started learning as I started really talking to other, you know, professionals being like, so why are you doing this? You know, why are you doing that? Da, 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 da. And they're like, well, because this is how you gain street credit in my game, you know? And I'm like, okay, 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 okay. I mean, I'm not going to argue with it if it is working, you know, so 
there's all these little things, man, that I've learned over this journey of just having this podcast up for a few years and interviewing different people, man, and just digging into what this game is really about. And make no mistake, I have not even got, I've got, I, I, there's still so many professionals out there that I need to get to, that I need to dig in and, and, and reach out to, you know, it's just, I only know so many people, you know, so if you guys know of some, you can always DM me or send me an email through the website, you know, of, uh, hey, this is a great guy you should have on your, on your podcast. And then we'll see if he'll even do it because a lot of dudes are still like, uh, you know, don't want to be on film and 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 want to do the silent professional thing, you know. But uh, I'm always looking for more talent, but I've got so much that I, I don't even know what to do with. But, you know, I believe the way forward for us, and this is something that I have um, been really humbled to start to realize is that we need to really show the best of this industry, you know, that all this tribalistic infighting against each other on social media is a joke. It's a game. It's, it's, it's heinous and we all lose, you know, I think personally the most respectable way to address another guy who's maybe doing something wrong is something that personally I have done which is if you see him make a mistake, like, yo, well, I'm not working the P whatever. And they post a private jet picture and then they got a tail number in there. It's like, Hey, homie, uh, if that is your principal's uh, jet, maybe it's just a charter. And maybe this was uh, three months ago, but uh, just pro tip. If you post, you know, a jet with a tail number in it, most people are going to think you're not professional. And a lot of guys I know won't want to work with you, you know, but that's in the DMs, you know, that's a phone call. That's not blasting him on social media. So you look like the know-it-all, you know, and you're the EP hall monitor of the day, and you know, like that's garbage to do something like that in public uh, and attack somebody like that in public online where things can't be taken back. You know, I think that the most professional thing to do is to reach out to that person direct. If you see something that isn't, uh, you don't think is professional and you don't think is, is, is on par with our industry. Or if you see them post something that you don't think represents our industry properly, you know, uh, which kind of brings me into another thing that I was, uh, that, I, that I also want to, you know, talk about. Be respectful, be professional endeavor to form a high quality relationship rather than um, a predatorial one or an adversarial one. The more people you can make friends with in your workplace, on your detail, online, the stronger, the larger your sphere of influence is. Your network really truly is your net worth in this game. And the thing I don't think a lot of people are, think, are, are thinking about when they do this is that other people are looking at you and they're trying to decide who you are based on what you say and do online. And who you are based on what you say and do online uh, may not be who you are, but there's these snapshots of you that go out there. And what you got to think about with these EP hall monitor types is like, would I want to work with this type of person? Would I want to work with the type of person you know, that's trying to tear someone else down. Like if you're watching it happen on your detail, like uh, this guy who just is, is, is always on this other guy's case and he can't get anything right all the time. Like, is that person making the team stronger or is that person just moaning about what that other person's doing? But these dudes that go and attack other agents online all the time, like are they making the industry stronger or are they just making us all look bad to the greater part of the world? And then imagine being on a detail with that type of person. The reality is if they go and attack one person, you know, it's just a matter of time till they attack you. The, 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 the individual that I was talking about at the beginning of this thing, I had to kick him out of executive protection lifestyle because he was talking crap about everybody else. And I said, my group won't be a place where we do this. And that's why we had to kick him out. And he was like, yo, well, these are real claims. Like, this is really what happened. This and I'm like, but my group won't be a place where we just bash other people, whether it's true or real or not. Because what happens when it's not real and someone is bashing somebody else and just making up stuff to, to sink them? You know, and then what happens? I'm not going to let my group become a group of just complainers and whiners and, and, and people that talk bad about other people and gripe about the industry like that other group that he went and started turning into. You know, it's like, that's just not what this place is about. And how do I verify that any of the stuff that people are bringing against each other all the time are, 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 are real or not, you know? Uh, and so it doesn't shock me that, you know, he's popping around talking bad about everyone. You know, it's, it's sad to me. Make a valuable contribution, do some legacy work, and the industry will reciprocate back to you your, 
contributions. But the reality of the game is when you have haters on your team as well, where you have haters out there in the industry that you're seeing, they're just talking bad about people that are attacking and trying to tear down people's work. You got to realize that it's just a matter of time until they attack you and people that are really smart know that's true and they avoid those types. So if you're about to drop some heat on somebody because they did something that wasn't cool to you or something that was actually wrong, you got to realize, man, people are going to be judging you on your ability in that moment to lead on your ability in that moment to make a positive contribution and have a positive impact on that person out there who made a mistake. And maybe they knew, maybe they just had an ego. Maybe they just have a gigantic ego and they want everyone to know what they're doing and they don't care. And they just trying to be the cool guy. Cool. Uh, but maybe they just didn't know any better. You know how many people I have in my, in my courses and that I interview on a daily basis that are really good people that make mistakes with their marketing, with their resume, with their LinkedIn. And I, and I, and I, in the interview, I'll be like, yo homie, so what's up with this picture? And they're like, oh, it's not a good picture. And I'm like, I mean, I think you look a little bit like a tough guy here, man. I'm sitting here, I've been talking with you for two or three minutes and you're like a really cool, congenial, kind of funny. You have great social dynamics. I'm heavily considering you for this detail, but you almost lost the interview because you look like uh, you're from a Black Hawk Down movie in this professional photo, supposedly professional photo you sent me, you know? And boom, I got a solid guy on a detail who's really a great dude because I took the time to get to know him and find out that, you know what, he's just transitioning in. He's a PMC, you know, he's a paramilitary contractor and he just didn't know any better. You know what I mean? And he's a good dude. He still thought his equity came from my my ability to perceive that he's a door kicker and he uh, can handle the, handle all the business if he needs to handle the business. And we know EP isn't just about handling the business now. You know, you got to go from warlord to guardian real quick. Otherwise, you're not going to have enough social equity to survive in the game. Those soft skills are where it's at now, baby. You got to have the hard skills. You got to be as advertised, but you got to be able to survive in these environments long enough to make that money and build equity and cement yourself in that environment, right? So, you know, uh, I think there's opportunities for us to have better relationships with each other. I think there's opportunities for us to lead each other. I think there's opportunities for us to help each other shine, to put up more food on everyone's table. So less of us are making these mistakes, posting pictures that are just like misrepresenting the industry and doing things like that, you know? With my brand, don't get it twisted. Sometimes I'm doing civilian stuff. Sometimes I'm doing EP stuff. And sometimes I'm doing like just cool stuff. You know, sometimes I'm, you know, just writing blogs with pictures of me with silencers and predator masks on because i think it's cool and you guys are gonna get so many more of those cool photos of me just doing because i'm building a life brand you know like it's about byron you know um it's it's about my byron rogers brand you're gonna get to see byron struggle you're gonna get to see byron grow you're gonna get to see byron fall you're gonna get to see byron strive to try to make a contribution and at the end of the day i just pray that you guys get to see what one mediocre man can do by the grace of God if he's faithful with the little bit he's been given, you know, long enough to see those seeds grow and, 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 and turn into much, to see the fruit of a mediocre man's life by the grace of God. You know, that's what I hope you guys see because I hope that inspires you all to just look in the mirror and be like, you know what, I'm not the most amazing gangster beautiful six-pack sexy gorgeous smartest fastest running special forces navy seal flippers you know uh dragon eye jedi mind trick dude ninja right viking um but you know i'm me and that means i can make a contribution that no one else can make and it's my responsibility to get that potential out of me so i can give it to the world and if I just work on that potential, I'll do something that this world has never seen because they've never seen me before. And that's the truth. They have never seen a synergy of you on a cellular level, on a subatomic level. They've never seen, the universe has never, ever seen you, ever. And will never see it again. This is your window. This is your time. Make your, make your stinking contribution. You know what I'm saying? That's why I have Vincere Abmori tattooed across my shoulders. You know what I'm saying? either conquer or die, Julius Caesar quote, right? Um, and by the grace of God, I am what I am. Grati out of day, some could some across my back. Oh, Corinthians 15, 10. But anyways, um, you know, that's what this game is about, making your unique contribution. You know, and you'll model certain pieces and things after certain people, but that's how we make the world a better place 
a safer place, you know, but that's also how we make this industry a better place, a safer place. But if you see people misstep, you know, reach out to them, talk to them about it, tell them why you think maybe that wasn't a good move. And maybe they'll receive you, maybe they'll appreciate it if you do it in a humble, uh, if you work your leadership skills and you do it in a humble and respectful manner, and you come from a real place of gratitude, you come from a real place of caring about the industry and caring about them as an agent in the industry who is going to be judged by their uh, actions online, you know, and, and then we start presenting a much more professional uh, look and feel to the world and to the industry because, yo, you know, if I'm going to be honest, EP is becoming a thing, you know, by the grace of God, and maybe my brand's had something to do with it, I don't know, but EP is becoming more and more of a thing. And now EP is becoming a cool thing. EP is becoming something that I'm getting DMs all the time about like, hey, I want to be an executive protection agent. How do I do this? You know, people are like, when I grow up, I want to be a bodyguard. You know, like this is like a thing now. We're getting, you know, and with my brands, just so you know, my intentions, I told you I was going to tell you those, you know, my intentions is my intention. One of them is not only to build a legacy, you know, in this, uh, in this life, you know, online and living in front of you guys and stuff like that. But to also put EP on the map in the civilian market in a way that it's never been done before. You know, I want to define, you know, in the minds of the world, you know, that executive protection agents are amazing assets. Executive protection agents, you learn protection strategies from executive protection agents, from bodyguards, from protectors, from professional protectors. Because what we do is protect people all day, every single day. Who better to learn from? Yeah, the Navy SEALs and Delta Force guys and all the hard hitters and zip liners and pipe hitters and all those dudes have a lot to give, a lot. But we also have a lot to give because all we've been doing is being in the civilian world, giving, uh, protecting them. And so who better to teach civilians how to protect themselves? There's a training market that we haven't even created or tapped into yet. So with my brand, I'm gaining visibility to put food on everyone else's table. So the rest of the world knows to put food on my table and everyone else's table. I'm going to put EP on the map in a way that the world has never seen before. That's my intention with a lot of this. That's, uh, that's what I'm doing. You know, that's that's kind of one of the things that, wasn't my original intention, but has become a beautiful goal that is becoming, that is within reach and a beautiful um, uh, side effect and something that's happening, you know, with what we are doing here as you guys support this brand, push this brand forward, support me on Patreon, share the videos, comment, like, and share the videos and all the stuff that we're putting out, you know, is because now people are starting to like really notice like, no, there's a whole industry of, of protectors. Like this is a thing, you know? Um, and I think that's huge. And another thing I do see in the industry too, is guys hating on other dudes because they're working different details and things like that. You know, and I, one of the things I want to say to the industry is just because you aren't doing it, even if you've been in the industry for a long time, just because you aren't doing it doesn't mean it's not being done in this industry. This industry, there are agents doing any, almost any and everything that every other agency is doing at this time you know, in the private sector, man, it's huge. It's vast. You know, I, I post pictures sometimes of me wearing a plate carrier and working private security and I'm doing executive protection on almost a weekly basis in a plate carrier. You know, I can't talk too much about it because of operational security, there are rifles involved, you know? So it's like, you know, I only pick when I post private security stuff, I only post pictures of things that I'm doing, you know, generally. Uh, and, and, and that's just a standard for my brand. I've really tightened that up, especially as last year you know, as I've really started looking at my content, but like, if I'm talking about EP, I'm doing EP, you know, and it's like, uh, some agents just because they've been in the game for a while and haven't done those things are like, Oh, that's not real. It's like, no, that, that's, I'm on the detail and that's sanctioned and lawful and real. And we're doing that. And it's happening right now. And just cause you ain't seen it doesn't mean it ain't being done, you know? So, uh, you know, just be really careful before you judge people because you don't know the whole story. Most of the time, y'all don't even know half the story. So, you know, just be mindful and be slow to judge and quick to listen and forge, aim to forge relationships with people. Because, you know, you know, if like, say the guy, the AP hall monitor that was reaching out, that was popping shots at me had reached out and said, Hey man, you know, I think I got some really valuable contributions. I've written a book and, you know, I, I think I've got some good stuff. Uh, that I'd like to get out to the industry, I'd have been like, yo, let's hop on the podcast. Yo, let me, let me, let me build you up. Let me expose the industry to your contributions. That would have been my move. And, and, and those types of things to me, it's tragic that, you know, that, 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 that things have taken this course, you know, there's another person that I was really like, you know what, maybe, maybe, you know, I know we've disagreed and I don't mind disagreeing and I love feedback underneath my videos. You know, I'm, I'm dropping field notes right now. I'm on like 70 some field notes, right? My goal is to get to a hundred and then I'll just keep on doing them because that's who I am. But, you know, 
uh, you know, out of a hundred feedback field notes, I got some negative feedback on one of them. And I was like, Oh yeah, no, everything everyone's saying is right. Actually, I'm going to um, readdress that field note and give it a little more context, you know, and there's another agent that I was like, you know, maybe she's ready to like, maybe we can like bury this hatchet and have a really straight up convo, you know, but then when you see the person coming all predatorial and aggressive and this and the next thing, like, you gotta get input, but it's like, mm, you should have went for the relationship rather than the hate rate. You know what I'm saying? But you know, it is what it is, and this is the game. And not a single one of you that is in this industry that is building your brand is gonna deal, is not gonna deal with what I'm talking about. And that's why this is a relevant, uh, very relevant topic, you know, but just, you know, in closing, as I begin to wrap this up, you guys, just pay attention to the reality that I believe the way forward that it's best for everyone in this game is that we really protect the sacredity of this game. I said in the first episode of this podcast that the, the mission is to bring honor and respect and dignity back to this game, to the executive protection industry, to make a smarter and more effective executive protection agent. And that is exactly what I have been aiming and believe that I'm doing in this space. You know, And if you guys have feedback for me, I'm 100% open to it. You know, um, and you can leave it under my videos, man. I'm like a, I'm like a freight train. I'm, I'm dropping content every single day. You know, if I make one bad move, it's gonna be one out of 1800 million by the end of the year. You know, I'm spinning plates and the way I work is volume. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, cool. You know, like, you know, someone asked me about one of the events, like, what if it doesn't work? I'm like, what if it doesn't work? This is one move. You know, I've got, I've got events scheduled out to the end of this whole entire year. My vision reaches two years, at least two years in this, with this brand and these things I'm planning, you know, it's like rounds down range. I'm a Marine. After I squeeze that round off, I'm already focused on the next one. So I'm just learning and any, and, and, and sometimes you win, sometimes you learn is my philosophy. So, you know, even if I am defeated, you know, in a battle, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the whole entire war and I'll make that battle a strategic event that will only make it. So the next time I hit the battlefield, I'm that much more dangerous because that's what we're doing here today in a game and it's a game. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, so this is a good time, man. But these are just thoughts, man. The way forward, let's present a unified front to the world. Let's look to reach out to each other and understand each other's differences rather than attack each other for our differences. Let's not look down on the way other people make their money. Every single person in this game, in this industry is doing what they believe is best and what they believe will help them, you know, achieve their goals. And if you see, if you know tools that will help them and they're using bad tools, reach out to them, you know, and have a conversation with them. Maybe you'll understand why they're doing what they're doing. Maybe you'll help them come up with a better way to achieve those objectives because you have more experience and use your experience and your influence to forge positive relationships across all the different sects and lines and cliques and gangs and tribes. You know, there are so many great warriors in our history that have done one thing that is becoming a goal of mine. And we'll see how this turns out by the time the end of this year happens, but I believe I'm gonna do it, which is uniting the tribes, you know, Tecumseh and uh, Geronimo. And there's just all kinds of, of great warriors in history that what did they do? They united the tribes, right? Um, e purbus unum out of many one, you know, one man out of many. How do you become that one man? You unite the tribes, you know, we're stronger together. You know, um, together we achieve more. A rising tide lifts all ships at sea, you know, and it's sometimes when guys attack me and they're like, oh, okay, you know, you, you think that you're the man. It's like, no, man, I don't think I'm the man. My podcast is about elevating other amazing professionals to give professionals in the game the best information from the best. All I do is I interview the best. It's not about me. I'm not sitting there talking about me usually, you know. Uh, my my, my uh, executive protection lifestyle is about bringing the best out of the industry so we can all learn from them. You know, I'm the conduit, man. I ain't trying to be the king. I don't, I'm not the best agent. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, you know, I'm just a student of the game. I grew up and this is all I've done since I was 21. You know what I'm saying? It's been uh, the same circus and different clowns for over a decade of my life. You know, it's like uh, protect your nation. You know, oh, you think you're the man. No, man, it's not about me. You don't know what you're looking at. Well, what, at, at these live events, I bring the best protectors I can find. I bring them in one place so that my demographic can learn from the best protectors. I don't even teach a single class at those, man. Those guys teach the classes because they're who they are. You know what I'm saying? I'm just the guy uniting. I'm the conduit. It just happens to be coming through me because I 
right now have, have a God has put inside my heart, the seed to create this new, these realities and these modalities and these tools and these products to make the world a safer place by helping good people become more willing, capable and prepared, helping good people become more dangerous, helping executive protection professionals become more effective at this game we love and what we do. So guys, one more time, the way forward is for us to unify, to protect each other, to cover each other, to take responsibility. You can't change what you can't take responsibility for and to reach out to one another and go after relationship rather than predatorial attack of one another, especially out in the open. You know what I'm saying? Protect the baseline, you know, don't lowball each other, protect the baseline of what we get paid for what we do, you know, these types of things. And as the industry sees us all be more professional and more effective, and we render higher quality work products because all the free information that I'm putting out and others are putting out and we all become better together, it puts food on everyone's table because clients are getting higher quality deliverables and we're becoming higher quality individuals and therefore the industry is a higher quality place, man. So that's all I had to say today. This is Byron Rogers. I make these videos, man, this content for free because I love you guys. And that's real. And if you doubt me, just look at the consistency over the last decade. You know what I mean? Um, you, I wouldn't be able to be this consistent if this wasn't my heart, you know, because time always tells the truth. You know, my actions line up with that. People tell you what they want, but their actions tell you who they are. And you guys see so much of my life on this thing. You know, you, you got to realize at a certain point, like, no, this is exactly who this dude is, man. Um, and I make these videos because I love you guys. So, you know, until next time, man, this is Byron Rogers, protector by nature and by trade, pointing out the way forward that I believe will put food and money in everyone's pockets and food on everyone's table. And I'm reminding you to be peaceful but not harmless. I'll see y'all in the next piece of content. Out. Boom! Yo, if you're a private security professional wanting to take your game to the next level, go to executiveprotectiontrainingday.com to check out my personal success package for private security professionals. Check it out, executiveprotectiontrainingday.com. And remember, y'all, hard skills do save lives, but soft skills get you paid. Boom. Boom. And to support this podcast, go to executiveprotectionlifestyle.com and contribute to our Patreon account. That Patreon account is what helps me make this podcast possible, contributing to this brand, what we're doing here, making it so that I can bring better guests on, making it so that we can plan more events and just expand the contribution to the private security industry and also to make an America a safer place. Do whatever you can, contribute whatever you can because it makes all of these things possible. Thanks for those contributions. Yo, and before we go, you know, I got a shout out to the sponsors. Start now with Primary Weapon Systems, PWS. They truly are the evolution of the rifle. Use Byron for 10% off. Gray Man and Company, the most comfortable tactical suits in the game. Use Byron for 10% off with them. Ballistic Theory. You're going to start seeing a lot of stuff with me in Ballistic Theory because they got good ammo for good prices. Use Byron for my discount with those guys as well. Last but not least, Executive Protection Institute. Hey, go check them out and get your executive protection education on. Until the next podcast, this is Byron Rogers, protector by nature and by trade. Out. Boom.